Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. Here in Bedrock Edition once again for Nether Survival Week. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, at long last, we get to make ourselves some iron stuff. And I think I know what I'm going to make out of this. First and foremost, I always end up making one of these as soon as I get some iron. It's not even a pickaxe, it's going to be a shield. Because shields are going to be very, very valuable to me as I cross areas of soul sand, potentially looking to get myself some arrows from skeletons. We can crouch, block with the shield, and then go in and attack. I'm looking forward to this. We do have a lot of arrows though, so I shouldn't need too many more, and we might even be able to get a few more from Bastion loot chests. So yes, the next thing we are going to make, if I can turn these wood planks into sticks, we're gonna make ourselves an iron pickaxe. Oh, exciting times, it's so good to have iron tools once again. And I'm actually gonna keep that in reserve because iron is very scarce here. And it turns out we will need a fair amount of that if we want to do any more. I think I will probably end up getting some of the other iron equipment as well. An iron sword might be useful. It will give us an equivalent amount of damage to the netherite hoe that I already have. So maybe we will end up doing that. However, I think I will keep the rest of the iron safely here in this chest for now. And we may end up getting a little bit more of that a little bit later. I am hoping that we'll be able to barter with some piglins today. And that is why I have all of this gold on me. We raided a bastion in the last episode and got ourselves a ton of gold that we can now barter with these piglins. Not only that, but the iron pickaxe will actually allow us to break more of the blocks of gold, so if we want to, we could return to that bastion and get the rest of the gold from it. So we've got a few piglins out here already for the morning bartering session. Let's see what you guys will give me in exchange for a couple of gold ingots, and there is plenty more where that came from. Now, obviously, at this point, I would love to set up some kind of bartering booths for them, but I know that they are just going to despawn at some point anyway, because I don't have any access to name tags while I'm here. So in the meantime, I think I'm just going to run around giving these guys some gold, seeing what they drop. We'll go through this entire stack of gold if we have to. Hopefully we'll get some iron out of the bargain. Finally got myself some iron from these guys. One of them just traded me 36 iron nuggets, which is enough for four iron ingots. That's a very, very good trade. They did also give me a splash potion of fire resistance, which will only last for two minutes and 15 seconds. But frankly, that is Probably enough to save my life here in the nether. Now, of course, we can turn this into four iron ingots. Yes, there we go. And have seven iron ingots in reserve, which is absolutely perfect. That would be enough, I think, to get us an axe, a shovel, and a sword with one ingot left over. That is not too bad. That is basically the full set of iron tools, give or take a hoe. But since we've already got the netherite hoe, I'm kind of happy to leave it at that and not worry about upgrading the hoe through the tool progression. It's only really going to be useful for harvesting warped and crimson fungi anyway and yeah if we can get a little bit more iron from these guys i will be happier because then i can start making some armor and armor is going to be something that i will need to upgrade a little bit if i plan on taking on a nether fortress in this episode which is my friends definitely the plan and after a couple more bartering sessions unfortunately all we got was a bunch of stuff like this we didn't end up getting any more iron so we are stuck at seven iron ingots and seven nuggets for now. What I'm thinking about doing is heading back to the bastion that we raided in yesterday's episode, grabbing those gold blocks and doing a little bit more bartering with the piglins in that area. And then I think we're going to go looking for some other structures, whether nether fortresses or bastions, they are more likely to have the loot that we need and having full iron is probably going to be a very, very useful thing. Here we are, we've made it back to the bastion and now I just need to seek out the rooms that have those gold blocks in and then block myself in as we did the other day, except this time I'm not going to destroy the gold block with a stone pickaxe. I have my iron pickaxe on me and we should be able to mine the gold block with that. I'm fairly certain resource blocks can be mined that way anyway, and I'm about to find out if they can't. One thing I also need to be doing, something that I always forget is possible in Bedrock Edition, is bridging while facing forward. And all you really need to do for that is make sure that you're standing on the edge of a block and then right click basically in the block space where you want the next block to go. And it's very, very simple to bridge that way. I always forget that is possible because it's a mechanic I'm not used to in Java Edition. Definitely allows you to stay alert when you are bridging around areas like this. And hey, I just found myself a room with a chest in it that I did not even realize was there the first time we swept through this bastion. So I'm going to quickly wall myself in here. Hopefully the piglins won't be able to hear me doing this if I open up this chest 
and see what's inside. Oh, yes. Now that's what I'm talking about. Six more iron. Great. That's very, very good. So now we don't even really need to worry about trading with the piglins all that much. We've got some more iron nuggets, which we can combine with the stuff we've got back at home. That's very, very useful. I don't think I claimed this one over here at the time either. So apparently there are a bunch of chests in this area, which I just <laughs> never ended up getting last time around. Well, that's definitely worth having, if you'll excuse me for one second. Oh, now you're talking. That's the stuff right there. Two blocks of gold. I'll take it, definitely. I'm hoping that we'll also be able to find some more bastions. And look at that. A free block of ancient debris. I didn't even spot that the first time I opened the chest. That is a good find. Definitely one less thing we have to find in our quest for netherite later on. And the piglins don't know a thing. It is unbelievable that I missed those chests the first time round as well. I'm so glad I came back to this bastion in the end because there are clearly things that we have left untouched here that need to be touched. <laughs> I think we'll we'll grab ourselves a few more things. That is a chest that I've already explored, I'm fairly certain, because it's on the level with this section over here. Yes, yes, okay, that's good. Where are the gold blocks, though? I swear I saw more of them from the outside, but I'm really not seeing a great deal of them now that we have returned here. Aha! There it is. For some reason I could see it from this angle and from basically no other angle. <laughs> so I think I'll probably head straight for it now I've seen it as long as I can get over this tricky lava section here. There we go and I should have enough blocks to block myself in here to make sure that the piglins do not head over and aggro on me because they will still get mad when I break this gold block as we saw in the previous episode but hopefully they shouldn't be able to get to me and after a while the aggressive behavior will wear off. So let's switch to the iron pickaxe mine out this gold block this time we get it and as you can hear they are a little bit mad at me now but that should calm down over time okay sounds like we should be good to go it looks like we successfully retrieved that gold block and the snorting noises outside have pretty much gone back to normal yep doesn't look like they're looking at me i should be in the clear and there is another gold block over here that seems a little bit more heavily guarded than the last and i don't have myself a whole lot of blocks i might break down some of this crimson wood so that i can block myself in here and let's swap to the iron pickaxe let's make sure we can grab that and yep the piglins are mad at me but once again i'm inside a safety box and they shouldn't be mad at me for long all right that seems to be over and in the meantime i can break down all of these gold blocks into gold ingots, giving me 36 more barters with the piglins. I wonder how well that will do if we trade around here. I have a feeling some stuff might get thrown into lava by mistake, so I might retreat to slightly more solid ground so I can continue bartering with these guys. Well, frankly, trading with these guys really didn't return all that great results. The iron trade is rare enough that I'm really not getting any from them if I trade maybe like half a stack of ingots. It's very lucky that we get ourselves some iron nuggets. What I got instead was close to a stack of ender pearls, which is not too bad, a soul speed two book, and then a bunch of other stuff that we've got before that is not really of any interest to me right now. So I think I'm going to head back to my house, and from there, we're going to try and strike out in search of other bastions that we can potentially raid for more iron loot, because we're going to have a lot better success rate if we end up getting iron from loot chests at this point. So on my way back to the house, I killed a few more hoglins for some easy pork chops, grilled those over the campfire, and now here we stand back in the house, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with all of this iron. The leftover iron nuggets can make at least one more iron ingot, so I think the next step is probably to make myself an iron sword, since my stone sword seems to be on its way out. I'm thinking maybe an iron chest plate, after that is going to be a very, very good call, so we'll make one of those, leaving us with four ingots left. And I'm going to save those for now, just in case we need another iron pickaxe, or maybe another iron axe or something like that will be kind of useful for farming trees. But we don't really need all that much wood right now, when we can really just make do with what we've got if we're making tools by ourselves. It is going to be nice to swap out a leather tunic for something that has a lot more protection value though so that's going to be a worthwhile trade-off so for now those can go back in there and i'll probably drop off a couple of the other valuable things as well the next stage of this journey is really going to be heading out into the nether and trying to find more structures whether it's a bastion or a nether fortress i'm basically going to do a sweep around this area to see what i can find and i do have my render distance turned up as high as it will go but of course being the nether there is biome fog everywhere which is going to limit my field of view so i'm really just going to have to search high and low for these structures and see what we can find so we've already found one bastion out in that direction i might reverse 
my direction a little bit. I might retrace my steps back to where we started and see if there's any chance of finding some other stuff there, gathering a few blocks as I go because I might need them to bridge to any structures that I see in the distance. Over here we're seeing bits of the warped forest that I originally took some wood from, although I think this is one of the opposite sides of it. Do either of these striders have saddles? They probably don't because I think the ones that have saddles typically start with zombie pigmen on them, and if we could find a saddled one already, then that would solve one of the major problems of navigation around here, because I would be able to cross some of the lava lakes without worrying too much about that. Now, I do, I do think we'll be able to find saddles in some of the structures here in the nether, in uh, nether fortresses and stuff like that, but first of all, we've got to find a fortress, <laughs> and one that has loot chests that contain a saddle, and that is going to be the difficult part. Another thing I'm going to do is grab some of the twisted vines that you find in these warped forests because bone mealing a few of those is going to make for a pretty easy rope to travel up and down from any taller structures like nether fortresses if we happen to find one, which I think is going to be a worthwhile strategy to employ. We'll probably have to grab a little bit of bone meal from the bone blocks we have at the house, but that seems like something sensible to keep on us. All right, and we're finding ourselves on the border between a warped and crimson forest here. Hopefully we'll be able to find a few structures around this place. It's actually really difficult to tell when another fortress is out there when you're standing on the edge of these biomes and the fog is so dark. It's kind of the same color as nether brick as well. So I get faked out by structures a lot here. I always think there's something appearing in the distance when it turns out just to be another wall of netherrack. <gasps> Oh my goodness, I think I've found one, and what a location to find it! Intersecting a warped forest here, and is that Enderman mad at me, or what's happening? Okay, he's just teleporting around like a weirdo, I guess. <laughs> Alright, we've found a nether fortress! I cannot believe the location of this, and oh gosh, there are wither skeletons and blazes immediately. Well, actually, that is not a concern of mine. We are not at all here for wither skeletons and blazes like you might normally be on a run of Minecraft. Instead, we are just here to get ourselves some diamond, if diamond is present here at all. So, basically, I just want to run in here, grab any loot chests I can find, and run out again. With that in mind, we are going to be playing this ever so slightly differently to how we normally would. We're not going to be looking for blaze spawners or anything like that. We are going to go for the stealth approach, basically, and I'm going to try my best to sneak up on in here and then try and avoid any encounters with the more dangerous denizens of the nether. It helps a little that the warped canopy here is giving me some cover, but hopefully we won't run into all that many with a skeletons, he says, rounding the corner and finding at least three of them within view. Okay, good. Good to know. Uh, let's see if we can dig into here, because this looks like a corridor to me, and this might potentially be a place where we can find a loot chest. Let's block that off. All right, we're in. <laughs> and I will need to light my way down here just so I know which way to get back. So let me pop down one of those. And I wonder if the fact that we're in a warped forest is going to mean fewer nether fortress mob spawns. I have a feeling that the fortress mob spawning is going to override the rest of this. So we're probably still going to encounter some stuff. Obviously, I can hear some blazes and wither skeletons further up. So we know this fortress is spawning mobs. I just wonder what is in the warped forest and what isn't when it comes to this stuff. Let's take a quick look around to the left, to the right, see if we can find any loot chests. There is a skeleton there and that... Okay, right, we are going to have to take this guy out. I always forget that you need to crouch to use shields on Bedrock Edition. That's one thing I need to get used to here. We're also going to need to establish some safety bars to make sure that we don't get followed by Wither Skeletons. We could take out a couple of blazes here, but apparently Blackstone cannot be used to make brewing stands yet. Or at least it's not the case in Java Edition right now, which means it probably hasn't been ported to Bedrock Edition either. There's a loot chest over here. I'm going to go for it. Let's see what we can get out of this. And hopefully there won't be any Wither Skeletons or blazes. Either side, there's one. Ah! <laughs> Attack it head on. There we go go. We're brilliant. We got ourselves a blaze rod. Well, that's a little bit of extra furnace fuel for me, I guess. Don't really need it for anything else. What do we have? Oh, that's... Well, I, I say disappointing, but we have ourselves a saddle now, which means we can saddle up some striders. That is really one of the things I wanted in here. The other thing being more iron and potentially even some diamond, because diamond does spawn in Nether Fortress loot chests, so hopefully we'll be able to find some. Let's press on. Let's push our luck a little bit here and see what we end up getting. Okay, first thing I ended up getting was an encounter with a blaze. That's not too bad. Let's see if there is anything around the corner here. More staircases downward, okay. 
Let's see if we end up with a couple of corners with some loot chests in. They often generate basically on the corners of corridors like this. Yes, perfect. Okay, and now we need to block this off before that guy gets here. Excellent work. Oh, we got diamond, but it's diamond horse armor. Are you kidding me? Well, not going to be seeing a horse in this series anytime soon, so we can make our escape from that and see if there are any loot chests further back in these corridors. Playing it incredibly cautiously here. Good. That is a dead end. What's around the corner here? I see a loot chest on the opposite side, guarded by a wither skeleton, and I also see a loot chest down the corridor here. So we're going to go for each of these one at a time, making sure we can block the area off with these blocks if need be. Wow, there's another chest there as well. That's three in a very small area. Another gold, another saddle, a flint and steel. <laughs> it's not something I actually need to relight the portal here, but we could potentially use it later if we want to. And another saddle and some nether warts. Seriously, this is such bad luck for nether fortress chests. Unbelievable. I wonder if maybe we can get this the cheeky way by breaking that and then opening it. Oh, yes, there's some iron in there. All right, well, we'll attack the wither skeleton from a distance. There we go. Get rid of him. Hopefully the blaze won't mind if I snag these iron ingots and go on my merry way. Not bad. No diamonds yet, but at least a little bit of iron. That's very good news. I'm a little bit scared to go outside on the parapets of these things because there are a lot more wither skeletons prowling the surface. And my pickaxes keep breaking, but that's fine. I have a couple more stone ones. I'm keeping the iron one in reserve just in case we need to break things like gold blocks. And yep, yeah, that's looking pretty chill. We will stay away from the outside of the structure for now. More wither skeletons patrolling the ramparts here. This is looking a little bit dicey. I do want to quickly check to my left and right. Yeah, there's tons of the structure over in that direction. Okay, well, we'll see if we can push through this area here past... There were some blazes in here. Looks like it's just the one with a skeleton now. So we'll block off here, use our safety strats, and yeah, attack as many of these guys as will come around the corner to fight me. Does mean we're getting a little bit of extra coal from fighting these guys as well, which we can always craft into torches, and that will be useful to make sure I know my way out again once we've been through some of this structure here. Nothing down this corridor, so I'm going to block that off. We've got a staircase leading down. It's amazing to see the warped fungus basically overriding the blocks of this structure. That's a pretty cool way to generate this. Just these random pockets of color, it seems like, inside of here. Okay, a couple of these, and yep, nothing. Dead end. Well, we can block that off at least, and we know that this whole corridor is basically a bust. We are going to have to go outside if we want to get any more loot from this. I'm going to keep my food topped up. I am not super comfortable walking outside here, but I think we can probably make a dash either to the right or to the left. There is a blaze spawner up there that we could break if we don't want to tangle with too many of those. Uh, all right, let's head to the right first, and it looks like this basically just leads up, so I'm not going to worry about that. Instead, I'm going to go over here to the left, see what's around here, a couple more staircases, and these lead up to corridors elsewhere on the structure. So I guess we have no choice really but to run across here and it looks like the majority of it is over that way so i think yeah we're going to hop back down here we're probably going to just make our way over this way we're moving back in the direction of the blaze spawner now and this is the bit that i'm really quite worried about let me try and hop in here and heal up obviously i'm within range of that spawner so that's not good let me retreat for cover that i know is a little bit safer okay i'm gonna do my best to fight my way through these blazes try and take out the spawner while i can dang it there's one of these in the way and then hopefully we can break this without them attacking me perfect all right the spawner is broken blasphemy and sacrilege i know but it is basically the only way i'll be able to get through this area alive it looks like there may be some other branches of the fortress out this way but nothing that seems to lead to an internal corridor which is a real shame it looks like we may have actually exhausted all the opportunities for loot chests in this fortress Oh, well, okay, well, I'll, I'll do another sweep of the structure, see if we can find anything, and I'll bring you guys back in if we get any more loot chests. At the very least, we've been able to encounter some iron today, but I was really hoping to find a chest with some diamonds in it. Wait a minute, there are some corridors here that have been blocked off by the fungus that I didn't even think to explore. So it looks like we've got another chest down here and oh okay that's a dangerous corridor we got to make sure we block this one off okay we're just going to attack this guy head on fair enough all right those guys down there should leave us alone for a minute while we oh yes 
Yes, we have found two diamonds, our first diamonds of the adventure. There's another saddle in there as well. If we wanted one, I might actually take that in favor of, I don't know, what's the junk in here? An ender pearl. We'll throw that out. And we've got two saddles for some striders if we want to continue exploring. Okay, let's time. it's time to push on. Let's see if we can check out that chest over there. Do the same trick we did with the wither skeletons, making sure that they can't hit us. And then block the arrows from the skeletons, who are now apparently shooting each other, which is good news. All right, even the wither skeletons are getting in on the action there. That's, <laughs> that's great. That's great. Take all of these guys out. And we have chest number two over here. Let me block this area off so that blaze out there doesn't attack me. And one iron ingot and some horse armor. Well, that is more iron than I was hoping we would even find around here. And we actually have our first pair of diamonds. We could make a diamond hoe, <laughs> or two diamond shovels, or a diamond sword even. That's probably a better proposition than both of those alternatives. But that sure is making me wonder if there are a couple of other places I should have explored in this fortress. Yes, okay, we have another chest up here. Very, very good news, my friends. What do we got? A bunch of gold ingots. Worth trading with piglins. I'll take it. And a big old magma cube down this corridor. Hopefully I can use the structure here to my advantage and just land a few hits on him from a distance block this off against the wither skeletons and let the magma cubes come through one at a time where hopefully I can deal with them a little bit more easily. The little ones have a heck of a bounce on them though. Look at that. They, they leapfrog towards you like nobody's business. But we can take the wither skeletons out now and let's see if there's anything else around this last corner. More with the skeletons. Okay, very good. And I didn't see a chest down there, so I think we can probably call it a day. I should really also be breaking these as I go to make sure that I don't end up picking up ones that I've already looked through. And I guess we can try digging our way through these fungi to see if there is anything over here. Have we been to this crossroads before? Looks like we might have. It does seem like I've carved my path through here, so... That looks like it might be it for this fortress, my friends. As before, I am going to quickly run around and give it another once over in case there are any more things I've missed, but I can't believe we have finally found some diamonds in this series. Episode 3, Diamonds, Exciting Times. Okay, I think that is everything. I think I managed to clear out everything I possibly can from this fortress, and to be honest, we didn't do all that badly in terms of combat. Thankfully, the spam clicking tactics are still alive and well in Bedrock Edition, so... Unless I just looked at that Enderman, I think it is probably time for me to make my escape. And here we are, home again. What a successful trip. I did take a ghast fireball to the face on the way back, hence the lack of hearts here. But we did so, so well. Let's take a look at what we got right here. Some diamonds. That's definitely the highlight of this. But we got ourselves four more iron ingots, which means probably enough for some iron pants if we want those maybe another iron pickaxe iron axe sh shovel you know all kinds of stuff that we can make out of that if we wanted to then we got a little bit more gold to barter with some piglins maybe even get some more iron nuggets out of that let's see we got ourselves some saddles at long last we can make ourselves a warped fungus on a stick and travel across the lava using a strider and i think that's probably going to be a valid strategy to find ourselves some more nether fortresses and bastions in the next episode because in the next episode we are aiming for full diamond gear that is the plan there we go warp fungus on a stick perfect the plan is to craft ourselves or find ourselves full diamond gear so that we can upgrade the entire set to netherite and i'm not going to worry about getting full iron gear for this episode because i think we are making do with the iron stuff that we have right now until we can get something more durable like diamond and diamond is going to be definitely a major upgrade and then upgrading that to netherite is going to mean it is fireproof <laughs> and that is kind of what i want right now but we're doing very very well in terms of how this challenge is going so far i need to throw a little bit of stuff in here just to tidy up my inventory but I think all in all, we can be pretty satisfied with the progress of today's episode. So guys, I think that is where we are going to leave it. In the next episode, we are probably going to go looking for more nether fortresses, more bastions, and more diamonds. So raiding all the structures we can possibly find from the back of our strider. Let's see if we can get that to happen. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.